Hey everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. When it comes to running Kubernetes clusters, things can get expensive pretty quickly. First, for people like you and me, say I wanna run my website in my community, in the chat app for that community on Kubernetes. Well, it's expensive. And for big companies running hundreds of nodes and workloads, it's also very expensive. And much of that expense is incurred because we've allotted way more resource than we actually need. It's called over-provisioning. Or over time, things get bigger and bigger without us reassessing whether we need all the extra nodes and CPU and things like that. Well, today we're gonna look at a tool that will not only help you reassess those costs, but a tool that will actually do it for you automatically. And it's called Cast AI. I'm doing this video because Kubernetes clusters are expensive and there's so much money out there wasted on over-provisioned resources. And hey, it's 2024. We have the technology now to fix that over-provisioning automatically on a scheduled basis. To have a dashboard that tells you, hey, based on your current workload size and the resources you have deployed in your current configuration, you could save 50% of your monthly costs by swapping out those M4 large instances for something smaller because you don't need them. In fact, we can get rid of two of those nodes completely and we'll do it for you and we'll reassess on a regular basis to help you keep those costs optimized. And we'll give you a look into your security posture and a number of other things that will benefit your software environment. And I wanna thank Cast AI for sponsoring this video. I do longer sponsor videos like this periodically with software that I think is amazing and software that I wanna share. So. Let me show you how this works. The website is cast.ai. It's free to sign up and use. Just click sign in. I'm gonna use GitHub to sign in. I find that easiest. So log in with GitHub. And the first thing you're presented with here is this test cluster that Cast AI has given you so that you can see all the features before you go and add your own cluster. So before we go and add our own, let me give you a quick overview. First, you can see things over here on an organizational level. So first I have my cloud cost optimization, which is where you manage and auto scale your Kate's cluster for savings. So I have a CPU usage report over time and per cluster. And then I can set up scheduled rebalancing if I want to. We'll talk about that in a minute. Second, we have Kubernetes cost monitoring. So I have my total clusters cost, total CPU cost, memory cost, on-demand cost, spot cost over time. And then again, that's broken up by clusters down here. And then finally, we can see our container security. Here we can detect, prioritize, and monitor our Kate's vulnerabilities and config issues. Again, we'll return back here in a minute. But here under cluster list, you can drill into individual clusters. So let's drill into this demo cluster and you're immediately presented with this available savings. So my cluster compute cost is $43,000 a month, but with Cast AI, I can bring that down to 20,000 a month. How? Well, first, if we scroll down here, we see this optimized cluster configuration. So currently I have 100 instances and things are way over provisioned. So they've determined that they can whittle this 100 instances down to only 24 instances. So instead of 18 of these and 17 of these, we can get rid of like 75% of all these instances to run our workload. That'll bring us down to from 43,000 down to 23,000 per month. But then we can also individually optimize workload right sizing. That'll bring us down to 11,000. We can use spot instances, which will bring us down to 6,000. Then we have some other options like using ARM nodes or running it on a cluster schedule. Say we only need the cluster for eight hours a day. If we were to click that, we can bring it down to just $3,000 a month from 43,000. So that's the available savings. You can also see your cost monitoring. So my current month spend, monthly forecast, average daily cost. And this is by cluster or workload or namespaces, also by labels and tags. And you can also see your network costs broken down. And then finally, you have these premium features down here like the auto scaler and the rebalancer, which we're gonna see in just a minute when we add our own cluster. But I do wanna mention that if you use my link below, you'll get these features with the first cluster that you add to Cast AI. So the cost monitoring here, it's always free. The security insights, it's always free. But the cost optimization, the paid features, you get using the link below with your first cluster. And that includes all that we're about to look at. But this is all from their demo cluster. Let's go ahead and add our own. So how do we do that? Well, let's go up here to connect cluster, click on that. And I have created an EKS cluster to test out today. You can choose AKS, GKE, OpenShift, whatever you want. So all I have to do here is click next and they give me this script that I can run. And you can click on this and look at the YAML and you'll find out it's just a read only agent. So this deploys the Cast AI agent into your cluster as a read only agent to report data back to Cast AI. So feel free to read this, the script is here. But to install it, I just copy the script Open up my terminal. So let me clear this, make it bigger, and just run the script. 
and you'll see everything created. A namespace, service account, config map, cluster role, role binding deployment, things like that. It's all listed here. So with this cast AI agent deployed, we can come back here, choose I ran the script, and our cluster should be connected. And now with my cluster added, of course, we've already looked at things on an organizational level. So let me click on my cluster, and you'll see immediately the savings you can get with cast AI. So it's telling me I can save almost 70% my cost is $219 a month for this cluster. I can bring it down to $74 a month. Now, before we actually go and apply these changes, I just wanna mention that these are the three free features. So we get this savings report or how much you can save on your cluster with optimal type and size configuration of your instances. We get cost monitoring, which displays your costs over time by labels, tags, namespaces, and more. And then of course the security report up here in the organization level. And then another helpful screen is this dashboard that gives me a total look at my cluster. So I have three nodes, three on demand. I have 10 pods and I am way over provisioned here. So allocatable is like 97%. Same thing with memory. So Cast AI should be able to save me a lot of money. So let's go back to the available savings and click on start saving now. And you get a new script to install. Why? Well, because earlier we installed the Cast AI agent on our cluster that's read only, but now we need to allow Cast AI to make changes to our cluster. And when we set up our auto scaler, when we do rebalancing and things like that, it has to have more permissions than we gave it initially. Now you can take the script here at the bottom and you can open it up and you can see everything it's going to do. So be sure you do that before you apply it, of course. But here we want to enable advanced Kubernetes automation and cost monitoring, so that's enabled. And we also want to enable security. You don't have to do this, but I like to get all the key Kubernetes security insights in one place. So I'm going to enable that. I'm going to take the script and copy it and run it in my cluster. So let me run this. And it's going to read out to you everything it's doing. So it's creating a new security group. It's attaching policies to the role, etc. So you can follow along with it. Once that's done, you should be able to rebalance your cluster. So it's telling me I'm only 81% to optimal setup. If you look down here at their suggested optimized configuration, I have two M4 large nodes. They're suggesting that I break this down to an M5A large and a C6A large, which is here two cent cheaper per hour, and here is about a cent cheaper per hour. And it gives me almost the same stats, but that saves me almost 30 bucks a month. And of course my cluster's small, that's why it's not huge savings. But if I want even more savings, I could choose again to run this on a schedule. That's gonna drop it down to just $52 a month. Say I don't wanna do that, but I wanna use ARM nodes, that'll drop it down to $100 a month. So about $45 off per month. Now, if this is your first time using the application, it may tell you when you go to rebalance your cluster, it may tell you that you need to enable the autoscaler. How the autoscaler works with cost efficiency as its main objective is that it will dynamically adjust the count of nodes by adding new right size nodes or removing underutilized nodes when situations present themselves, like when a pod is unschedulable due to insufficient resources, it will add a node if needed. Or if there are empty nodes that haven't been utilized in a period of time, it will remove it. It watches your cluster via that cast AI Kubernetes agent that we deployed and that syncs cluster state changes to cast AI. So if you go over here to autoscaler, you'll see there's three policies. I mean, if it's going to be rebalancing your cluster, taking down nodes, adding nodes, you want to be able to still have control over what's being done. And you do that in Kubernetes with policies. So there's three main policies here. First, you have this unscheduled pods policy. Cast AI needs to react to unschedulable pods, which are pods stuck in a pending state that can't be scheduled onto a node. So first, actually, let's turn this on. Let's enable it. These will probably be off, so let me cut these off. And you can open up the template and make changes. So there's lots of options here that still keep you in control of everything. And this is just gonna be the default template. I can add like spot instances, put some constraints on there if need be, and then save changes. Second, you have the node deletion policy. When nodes no longer have scheduled workloads, Cast AI can remove that excess capacity. So the TTL setting is set the amount of time an empty node should remain in the cluster. I'm gonna put it at two minutes. I think the default is five. Then I have the evictor turned on, which continuously compacts pods into fewer nodes, creating empty instances that can be removed by the node deletion policy. Evictor will by default consider only applications that have multiple replicas in order not to cause any downtime. So things are very thoughtful here in that it doesn't want to disrupt your day to day. And then there's a CPU limit policy. The cluster cannot be scaled above the max or below the minimum li limits. So here's one core, CPU is my minimum, 100 as my maximum. So I'm just gonna save that. 
That is your auto scaler settings. And that's going to, over time, keep your costs down as well, according to the policies that you set. So with that set, let's go back to the rebalancer. Actually, let's go back to the available savings page. And again, this is recommending me switch over to these two size nodes. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, this guy had three nodes a minute ago. Now it's only showing two nodes. Something must be wrong. Actually, it's not. What happened was the autoscaler, when we enabled it, determined that we didn't need that third node at all. And it went ahead and deleted it. That's before we did any rebalancing. And that's the power of the autoscaler and of Cast AI. So now when we get to this rebalancer portion, we're now working with two nodes. And we're optimizing the two nodes that were left. So I'm gonna go to rebalance. It's gonna show me my two nodes. Here I can set a minimum node count. I can evict nodes gracefully. I'm gonna click generate plan. And it's generating a rebalancing plan. So it looks like it didn't change anything. It's taking me from $146 a month down to 118. I'm predicted to save about 20%. And to rebalance, just come down here and click rebalance. And the rebalance is in progress. It usually takes up to two minutes. So it's 100% done creating nodes. 33% done overall. Now it should shift over to cleaning up nodes. So it created those two new nodes and it's gonna take down the old two nodes. All right, and the rebalance is completed. You'll see here I saved 18.75%. I dropped my cost from 146 down to 118. And I can get more details by choosing rebalance details. But one additional thing I can do is actually schedule my rebalancing. Maybe I want to rebalance my dev environment. So maybe I wanna do uh, environment dev if I have clusters with that label. And then I wanna do that every week on Saturday at midnight. So every week I wanna run this rebalancer to rebalance my clusters. So you can do it manually, but you can also schedule it on a regular basis. So that's rebalancing and that's auto scaling. And of course you have the dashboard here and your cost monitoring over time. So you'll see your savings, you'll see things go up when you start adding more workloads and more nodes, and then you'll rebalance, you'll see things go down. So you'll see your cost in projected spending here. So the last thing I wanna to touch on is the security feature, which is really neat. So this feature lets you scan your clusters for vulnerabilities and then check them against industry best practices. As a result, you get reports with actionable insights for fixing the detected issues. So here in best practice, we have a compliance standard of the CIS EKS benchmark 1.3, and we'll see air resources checked against these best practices. So here's all the best practices. I can click on one, like minimize the admission of privileged containers. Privileged containers are never good. So I can click on that. I can read about it. I can see the remediation for it, and then I can see what resources are actually affected. And it looks like they're key pieces to my cluster that I probably wouldn't change. So I could actually set up exceptions on those so that I can focus on ones that I can change. Next, you have image security, which allows you to see all of your Kubernetes cluster images and their vulnerabilities in one place. So it looks like we have 30 critical vulnerabilities. That's not good. 83 high, 93 medium, but you can see all of these in one central location. And it looks like they all come from this Nginx deployment that I added to my cluster. So if I click on that, we'll get all the information we need about these vulnerabilities, their score, what packages they're found in, and the fixes. And then of course I can drill in on the affected resource, which is my Nginx deployment. So I thought that was a really neat addition to have a dedicated section on security with all of your resources put against industry best practices, in addition to all of your containers being scanned for vulnerabilities with recommended remediations for them. Now, finally, there's this brand new feature. I haven't used it, it's in beta, but it will allow you to link Cast AI up to OpenAI and it will unlock detailed insights into OpenAI usage and help you with cost savings there. We know that different LLM models have different pricing. Well, Cast AI can help you identify the one with the best costs and performance and accuracy based on your needs. It analyzes the cost of specific users and API keys, overall usage patterns, and other factors. So that's just something to look out for. So all in all, Cast AI provides a service that you can deploy to your cluster that will help you dramatically reduce costs due to over-provisioning, will help you auto-scale up and down to further keep those costs down, and provide you with a detailed, real-time look at your security posture down to the image level. So you have your cluster as normal, but Cast AI will continuously optimize it while leaving you still with the reins in your hands. Like I said earlier, the link below will help you get started and provides all the cluster optimization features that are actually paid features for free for your first cluster. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.